Hi there, this is Anmesh from Perfect, and today I'm going to share with you how to use the power of luminosity to add dimension and make your portraits come to life. And also, we will learn a trick to create attention for the eyes. We will do this process in multiple phases and it's going to be super fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. Life is for living. Let's see where the song might lead. Before we begin, I have an awesome news for you. First of all, thank you so very much for staying at home and saving the world. That's one of the best things that we can do at the moment. While we are at home, how about attending a full-blown Photoshop conference right from the comfort of your homes? 19 rockstar Photoshop instructors and I are putting together the Photoshop Virtual Summit. It's an event to help creatives learn more in Photoshop. And guess what? You can sign up and watch the entire classes absolutely for free. If you wish, you can also get lifetime access to more than 35 sessions plus exclusive contents from the event like lesson notes, practice files and assets and that is completely optional. This tutorial is an excerpt from the class that I'm teaching in the conference that is 7 advanced blending mode techniques for pro Photoshop users. Do join me and get your free tickets at pix.live slash summit or simply click the link in the description. I would love to see you there. Let's get back to the video. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do is to create a gradient map. So click on the adjustment layer icon right there. Click on that and then choose gradient map. All right. Now the gradient map maps the colors of the highlights, shadows and midtones. So right now the gradient is set from black to white. So the dark areas are in black and as it gradually goes to the right hand side, shades of grays continue absolutely to white. The bright areas are white and the dark areas are black. Makes sense? If you single click on the bar, different gradients are going to show up. The gradient editor dialog box is going to show up. So you can set the highlights, the shadows, the midtones to whatever color you wish using this. So there are lots of gradients to play with. You can literally change the highlights and shadow color to anything. So let's say if I double click on the left slider, the color picker is going to show up. I can color the shadows as red. I can color them as green. You get the point. And hit OK. I can color the highlights to something else like red or blue. Right? This is not what we are going for. I was just trying to explain how this works. What we are after is not changing the color. We just want to manipulate the brightness to add that 3D effect to the portrait, to add more dimension to the portrait. So the gradient that we are interested in should have the entire range of brightness. And what a better gradient to show that than absolute black to absolute white, right? Does that make sense? So let's choose a gradient from black to white. If you cannot find one, just single click on the left slider, click on the color, set it to absolute black, single click on the right slider, click on the color, set it to absolute white. All right. Once you do that, hit OK. Now we don't want to manipulate the colors and make it black and white. What is the blend mode which tells Photoshop that do not touch the color, only touch the luminosity? That is actually the luminosity blend mode. So click on the blend mode drop down menu and then simply choose luminosity. That way it won't affect the colors. Now we can manipulate this in any way we want and that will manipulate the luminosity values. So first of all, let's zoom into the face just like this. But there are just two sliders. Yes, we can work with them and do some manipulations. But the more sliders we have, the more the level of manipulations we can do. So first, click in the middle. And to make sure it's perfectly in the middle, just type in the location to be 50. So this is location 0, this is 50, this is 100. Now you can guess the rest of the numbers. Single click on the color. Now, since it's in the middle, it should be what? 50% gray. In other words, it should have 50% brightness. So set the hue and the saturation to zero and brightness to 50. Hit OK. Similarly, we'll create a slider right there. And between zero and 50, what is the number? 25. So set the location to 25. Single click on the slider. Single click on the color set the brightness level to 25. Create one more here, set the location to 75 if it's not already and set the brightness to 
75. You can even create more sliders if you want. If you want more control over the dark areas, you can create one more slider here. Now, what is the color between 0 and 25? 12.5 but since we cannot put something like that there let's set it first of all to location 13 if even number is you liking you can put 12 you get the point and brightness to 13 as well all right pretty great now here comes the most fun part of the tutorial that is when you manipulate these sliders have a look if you want to add more shine in the bright areas take the whites a little bit towards the left and as soon as you do that have a look at the shine that you add so play with each slider one by one and see what looks good to you. Just make sure that the transitions are smooth and you're not losing details in the highlights or the shadows. So if you bring two sliders very close, the transition will not be smooth and it's going to look awful. Have a look at this. See, we don't want any of that. So make sure that the distance between two sliders are enough to not create that ugly effect. All right, let's continue. Now, just to give you a little tip, while you're fiddling with the sliders, you can also use this. You click on the slider and then you can use the up and down arrow keys to move it forward and back. You can even create even more sliders if you want. So here I'll create one more and between 0 and 13, what is the number? So we can have 7 or 6. So I'm going to create one with brightness 6 and then select the slider and move it front and back, see what effect it creates. Now this looks pretty good to me. Once you're satisfied, just hit OK. There you have it, my friend. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Look at the difference. Now you might think it's too much. Yes, of course, this is too much. And we don't want it all over the place. We only want it on the face to make it come to life, to add that bump and to add the attention and the focus. So select the mask, press Control or Command I right there, take the brush, Take a soft round brush. Let's make the brush a little bigger with white as the foreground color. You can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. And now let's start painting on the face. Make sure opacity and flow all at 100. You can also choose to paint in certain areas like the cheeks and the nose. If you want that kind of an effect, you can do that. And let's start painting. Wow, it looks pretty darn good. Let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Now we don't want it in certain areas like the eyes, the lips so much. So now let's change the flow to about 10% and change the foreground color to black by pressing X. Now let's zoom in and take it away from the lips. Looks pretty good. Here's the before, here's the after. I think I need to take more away. All right, now let's take it completely away from the eyes. Increase the flow back to 100% and then just paint inside the eye. Now this is looking pretty cool. Let's name this phase 1. 1. Alright. And now let's control the opacity. How much of it do you want? So let's slowly and gradually increase it. And for me, I guess an opacity of 62 or 65 would be perfect for this example. Now let's do phase two. Phase two is nothing but treating it again, a little differently. So take the phase one and then press Control or Command J. All right, this duplicates phase one and we can now name this phase two. All right, now we're gonna have to go back to the properties again, double click on it, single click on the gradient map, we are back on the properties. Now in here, you might have to make different adjustments, just play and experiment with it to enhance different areas of the face. Now when I'm having a look at it, the effect is looking a little faint. You know why? Hit OK first. The opacity is still 65% from the previous phase. So let's just turn it to 100 so that we can see the full effect and then we can play with the opacity later. This looks pretty good to me. Once you're satisfied, again, hit OK. Now opacity is of course very high. Decrease it all the way down and slowly and gradually increase it. So for this example, let's set it to about 40%. So there you have it. Let's have a complete look at the before and after. Let's zoom out a little bit. So here's the before, flat, and here is the after. Look at the face. Look at so much difference that we have created. Now, let me give you one additional tip to create attention for the eyes. So for that, it's pretty simple. We have done this before. 
we just need to create a curves adjustment layer at the very top. So select the topmost layer and then click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Click in the middle, create a point in the middle, take it all the way up, just like this. All right, now click on the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Take the brush with white as the foreground color, zoom in, make the brush a little larger and just, you know the word, just dab on the opposite direction of the light. So if the light is coming from the top left, you will dab on the bottom right. So let's dab right in there, looks pretty good. Let's do the same for the other eye. There we go. Now let's make the brush a little smaller. Make sure the foreground color now is black by pressing X and then take away the extra areas. Do the same here. Do not forget the iris. So dab in the middle, just like that. And for the other eye as well. You can also take it away under the eyelid a little bit. Do the same on the other side. There you have it, my friend. Let's zoom out and have a look. The eyes are amazing, but at the point, it's kind of too much. Uh, we don't want to make it look like a, a, a horror story. All right, so let's decrease the opacity and increase it to probably about 40%. And there you have it, my friend. Interesting, beautiful portrait. Let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before and here is the after. Now, if you think the entire effect is kind of too much, just select the layer on top of the background, hold the shift key, select the topmost layer if you want to include the eye, and then press Ctrl or Command G. All right, we are humans. We always tend to go overboard with our effects especially. So just decrease the overall opacity of the group and gradually increase it to the point where you think it looks pretty good. So for me, about 52 looks nice. And there you have it. Here's the before, here's the after. Just a subtle effect makes so much difference. I hope this video helped you and before we end, just a quick little recap. All you have to do is to create a gradient map, change the blend mode to luminosity because we don't want to affect the colors and set the gradient from black to white. Create the middle sliders according to the locations and then just play with the sliders. That's pretty much it. You can duplicate it, create as many phases as you want and in the end, we simply created attention for the eyes by creating a curves adjustment layer taking it all up and then inverting the mask and with white as the foreground color, just dab on the opposite direction of the light inside of the eye. And you can clean it up later, but you get the point. Thank you so much for watching. And also I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Do not forget, join me in the event, get the tickets for free again here, Photoshop Virtual Summit, there's going to be more than 35 classes, 20 instructors. It's going to be an amazing event. So be there. You can join online from the comfort of your homes for free. So I expect you to be there. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Life is for living. Let's see where the soul might lead.